Hey guys, it's Jamie. Um, so I wanted to start actually doing real videos and stuff, talking to you guys. I know I've been meaning to, like legitimately the past like three, four years, I've been saying I'll do it. Um, and I'm doing it. So a question that I get a lot that I feel the need to just talk to you guys about, how do you know that you are trans? And like, I can share my experience, how I knew, but I just want to like say before I go and delve into that, that everyone has a different story and there's no like right or wrong way to be trans or to you know self-discover who you who you really are or your identity so start starting from the time i was really really little um you know four or five years old i thought that i thought that i was a guy like i thought i was a little boy i always had my shirt off i had three older brothers and i just thought that i was one of them um and I just, I guess I didn't think too hard about gender when I was just a little kid. I just was like, yep, I'm a little boy. And I carried on with my life. You know, I started getting a little bit older, like, you know, 12, 13 years old. That, um, that's when kind of my parents and family started to recognize me as, oh, you're becoming like a young woman. And that's when I started realizing, oh, I'm not a boy. I guess that I am a girl. That's when I realized, or started, I guess, really learning all these like gender roles that you start learning at that age. So, you know, what a girl is supposed to do, how a girl is supposed to act, look, things like that. And I learned very quickly that by me looking like a, a pretty little girl, that it made my parents really happy and it made people around me happy. So it's just something that I was like, okay, I guess that this is what I need to do. It was a little bit confusing, but I just, I've always been, and I think I always kind of will be like a people pleaser, and I definitely wanted to make my parents just happy. I continued to be a presentable, like presenting as a female. And then when I was like 15, that's when it really started hitting me hard that I was unhappy when when people would leave the house when my brothers and my parents would leave i would get my brother's clothing and i would put it on and i would just stare at myself in the mirror and i like i loved how i looked and i even told my best friend at the time and i showed her how i looked like in the dude clothes and stuff um and then i actually had her like take pictures of me in the clothes because i just i wanted to look and see how I looked in the clothes because I was just so excited to be able to express that like masculine side of me that I just didn't really ever get to. And I thought that that was it. I thought that that would continue to make me happy, you know, just that little bit of every once in a while, you know, every other day I would get to put on some masculine clothes. Eventually, as I got older, it started, you know, eating at me more. And I was like, but I want to wear those clothes all the time, but I want to have that masculine feeling all the time and be able to express that feeling that's inside of me instead of covering it or trying to hide it or trying to make everyone happy and thinking about what they want me to be you know i was ignoring who i wanted to be and a question i get a lot is well if you felt masculine why then did you just not stay a female why couldn't you just be a masculine female and the thing is, is there's absolutely nothing wrong with masculine females just like there's absolutely nothing wrong with a person who is born female and transitioned to male um it's just a feeling that you know and i think it's confusing for people that don't have that feeling and so they're like well why didn't you do this why didn't you do that and the the fact of the matter is if you have those questions you don't understand so instead of trying to understand and trying so hard you're not gonna understand because you don't have those feelings so you just have to be like oh i respect that that is the truth of this person so there's plenty of females who want to be female who are like yeah i'm masculine and that's awesome um for me that's that's not what i wanted that's not who i was um i didn't feel like a masculine female i legitimately feel like i'm a guy it took me a long time to come out. I didn't come out until I was 19 because of my family. You know, they're very religious, very conservative. So it was just like a nerve wracking experience. Also, I didn't want to make them unhappy. I knew exactly what was going to happen. I knew when I came out that I wasn't going to get to stay there. 
I wasn't going to get to have my family in my life. Um, so it just, it took me, you know, until I was 19 to, to come out. And I also had to do a lot of learning about things because I didn't understand my feelings. You know, four or five years ago, there still was not that much information about trans men. And I didn't know, I thought something was wrong with me. I didn't know why I wanted to be a guy. I didn't know, literally, I would think about my future and I would be like, oh, when I'm a man married to, you know, a woman with kids and I'm the husband and blah, 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 and I have to stop myself and be like, wait, why am I thinking like that? Like, I'm supposed to be a girl. Like, it was a very confusing time for me all growing up. My teenage years were very confusing. It took some figuring out. It took me having to piece apart things. There's a lot of assumptions that... You know, if you're a masculine woman, there's assumptions that then you have to like women. Um, there's a lot of assumptions, you know, about identity and sexuality and trying to merge all those together when really they're two separate things. So I sat down with myself, literally, with a piece of paper and I wrote how I feel. You know, I feel masculine. I feel... Like, I want to be able to express myself um, outwardly through, th from my core to my outside. And I had to tell myself that there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to be selfish, you know. And then I had to talk to myself about my sexuality. I had always been attracted to women. From the time I was, like, little, like, in kindergarten, I kissed a girl in kindergarten. I held her hand in kindergarten. Like, I've always just been attracted to women. And that's okay. But I had to recognize that my identity and how I feel masculine, how I feel that I am a man is separate from my sexuality. So when I came out, I didn't feel it was necessary to come out about my sexuality. You know, who you love is just who you love, who you want to be with, who you want to be with. At the time, my main concern was coming out as who I am. I guess for me the simple the simple answer to the question is i i've always known that i'm a guy but i didn't always know that i was transgender because i didn't really know what that was um and i think it's so crazy that when i was so little before the world got all into my head i just thought i was a boy and I feel like that speaks volumes because everyone's, you know, main concern is like, oh, you know, kids coming out so young, kids coming out so young, you know, it's in the media and it's influencing people. That's, that's not true because it's not that they're influencing anyone to do anything. You can't make someone change their identity. That is something you're born with. Um, and I'm living proof of that. But if I would have known you know, what that was when I was little. And if I would have had parents that I felt comfortable talking to, because the main thing is that I just couldn't tell my parents what was going on inside of me. If I'd had those two things, I would have come out when I was like, legitimately like four or five years old. Um, but in a way, I, I'm thankful for everything I've gone through. I'm thankful, you know, for my journey. And I think I could either let it make me bitter to life or make me feel proud of you know everything I've been through and where I'm at now and um but yeah I just really want to sit down and express you know my journey and also express that everyone has their own journey um and it doesn't make anyone more or less or any of that you know, whoever is listening, whether you are trans, whether you are an ally to the transgender community, whether you're literally just trying to learn because you don't know, or whether you don't agree with the transgender community, that just in the same way, everyone kind of has this self-discovery in life of what they want to do for their career, um, what kind of style they wear, what type of music they listen to, where, in a way, that's, like... That's how it is for us. Ours is just more visible. Our self-discovery is just visible to the eye and isn't, you know, something that everyone does. So it's looked at as like, whoa, you changed so drastically, so dramatically. Why do you have to go this far? But to us, it's not like that. 
to us, it's just like, I was going too far trying to be a girl. Like, that was me going way too far. Like, I was just trying to be over the top instead of just coming into my truth. And me coming into my truth uh, may look crazy to somebody else. It might look like, you know, um, I've lost my marbles or whatever. I know some people from my hometown thought that. But it's just, it's not like that. Um, it's just a self-discovery. It's um, coming into my truth. It's my identity. And uh, that's something that, please, anyone listening, no matter if you're, uh, you know, trans or, or identify as, as lesbian or gay or pansexual or, or non-binary, um, that's something that is yours. Your identity is yours. Um, your truth is yours. And that's something you should be so happy that no one can take away from you. You know, I have people all the time that want to try to uh, insult me by saying, uh, you know, I'm still a girl or telling me that my relationship is a lesbian relationship and things like that. And I think it's so important, you know, when people do and say those types of things to you to remind yourself, like, that's their opinion, but this is my truth. You know, that's their stance and that's our outlook but that doesn't change who i am and i think that that you can feel you know empowered in the fact that you are in control of your identity you are in control of your life and your truth and who you are and i think that's the beauty of it i think that's how i've grown so much in the last four years more than the whole 19 years before that because I just was able to realize that um, that my life is mine, and my identity is mine, and who I am is mine. And it doesn't matter if my parents agree with that. It doesn't matter if some stranger on the internet likes it or not. It doesn't matter because I'm happy and I am who I am. Um, so I think that's the most important thing. The thing that I want you to take away from this video is no matter where you are in your life, or what brought you here to listen to this, um, that you are you. That's awesome. And don't let internet trolls or other people, even family members, people you love, don't let them, you know, take that away from you. And you're going to help a lot of people when you do that. You're going to help yourself and you're going to help the people around you, whether you know it or not. So, well, like the video, comment, and let me know what you want to see next, good topics, anything like that. Love you guys.